last video we had a look at IAM identities and we made use of users, we made use of user groups and we gave to users roles. However, let's have a look at what are users within IAM, what are user groups and what are roles. So first of all, uh, let's start by the account root user. The account root user is essentially that account that you use when you log in using, for example, your work email address together with a password that has been created together with that um, where you have your credit card linked. However, a root user, it's also a user that has admin uh, access. Okay, so your, your root user, your admin account, or multiple admin accounts, they can actually share the same login details and the example video that I made this morning uh, that you probably saw already. I created a uh, main user in which I log in using my username and password uh, and then uh, in the video I show how to create a second user which doesn't have an email address. Um, however, I can actually uh, give to it uh, a password and I can access uh, through a different page um, which has all this in where I can control more fine tuning which access to provide to it. All right, so let's have a look at the second group, which is user, which already covered partially, because a user is uh, any IM instance that represents a person or a service. Okay, so let's make a, first of all, what is a person and what is a service? A person is uh, when you create an account that has access to the console, while a service is uh, uh, when you create uh, an account that essentially can be used uh, through the CLI. Uh, for example, uh, you set uh, certain uh, credentials and we saw this video um, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, you can use them to, uh, while the person uh, user can uh, use, uh, can send into the console and do actions within the console, the service uh, can use the uh, CLI. For example, can access DynamoDB or can access S3 or can do both, depending on which option you provide to them. Then uh, we have user groups. What is uh, a user group? A uh, user group is a collection of IAM users. So it means that multiple users belong to this group, okay? You can identify different users belonging to different user groups. You can have a user group, for example, developers, another one, administrators and you can have users that actually belong to more than one user. All right, so what does it mean? It means that your uh, user group can uh, have multiple users within and each one of your users can actually be assigned to different user groups. For example, you might create a user group that um, allows users to access to DynamoDB and then another group, user group that access allows people, uh, um, users, uh, to access S3. However, you can also create users that have belong to both groups and, and the people that belong to both groups, they can access to AWS uh, S3 as well as the NamoDB. While uh, if you just use the one type, they could only access to one uh, single type. Now we can have roles and we saw the roles uh, in uh, the video before. In uh, this video, uh, before we create a user with admin account and then I made the example of a user that can access um, a particular resource, which in that case of the example was to list all the users. So that is the role, okay? And the role, um, the role defines what the user can actually do. So what are the, the roles? that the user is actually able to do, which tasks uh, the user can perform and what are the limits. Now, how you define those roles? Those roles are defined through the permissions, which are assigned to, through a JSON document that essentially is going to describe the permissions assigned to this user. Now, in AWS, as well as other cloud providers, there is a, a principle called the list uh, privilege principle. And the meaning of that is that we're going to try to give the least amount of permissions possible 
to a certain user or to a certain group and this is to limit uh, essentially your bill to understand who is able to access to what within um, your policy now I want to show you the next bit I want to show you is the policy I am policy structure okay so here we have uh, another page from the Amazon AWS documentation which talks about how I am works so I am is essentially gonna give you access to different uh, operations different parts uh, of uh, uh, AWS in a granular way all right this is done through something called uh, a policy which is essentially a JSON document this JSON, JSON document has uh, some parts in it and uh, those parts are the version which is the polish the policy version for example uh, 2012 10 17 which is usually the one that is used the id which is the policy identifier then we have a statement a uh, statement uh, it's an array within this json in which one uh, each statement inside is made by an sid which is the statement id and it's optional then there is the effect which is to enable or disable something the principle which essentially says the account the user or the role to which uh, the policy is going to be applied to and then we have the action which is the um, which is what the, the policy allows or denies to do for that particular user or list of users then there are the resources which is the list of resources to which the action are going to be applied to and uh, lately there is the condition and the condition describes um, uh, is a condition for when the policy is actually being um, uh, placed in effect so if we're gonna search for uh, so let's have a look at an example of a policy here we're going to give uh, a version and then the statement this statement in particular contains only one section okay and the effect uh, is to allow is going to allow those uh, services which is elastic uh, and uh, data pipeline and uh, is to provide the role to the users okay so in here we don't have for example uh, resources uh, which is the list so what it means we can provide this json document uh, to a resource and then this will be applied in the console so now if we go back there is another example in here which is essentially saying uh, we provide uh, a statement uh, where you allow a particular resource with a particular number and the action is ns3 um, ns3 action okay s3 star star meaning uh, all the things it's a wildcard and we allow this on uh, my bucket and anything be under my bucket another example is uh, this one where the statement says that allows any action under list s3 so any action that starts with list and again applied to resource uh, my bucket and anything under my bucket now the difference between those two is that the first one was allowing any action under s3 and is specifying a principle which is essentially a particular resource within our instance while this one is more generic although is actually applied to the same uh, to the same bucket and now in the last one that i'm going to go through with you uh, is this one in which there is uh, a condition so it means that this condition is going to say it's just an example of the condition that you can decide there are multiple uh, that you can uh, provide this condition means that the current time for uh, aws okay needs to be higher than uh, this time and less than this time so it means that this particular policy in this particular example it's only valid for about three hours uh, between uh, 12 and 15 pm on the 30th of november 2014 so guys that is everything for uh, today's videos i hope uh, you enjoyed uh, and um, <clears throat> if you 
any questions or you have any comments please leave them in the comment section below uh, and see you next week for a new video about aws thank you bye bye